Mike, do you want to do the intro? No, but I'll do it. Welcome to the Sea Otter Town Hall podcast. Episode 23, baby. Yeah, special guest Dominic Leonelli this week. What's up, you guys? Welcome to the show. Yeah. I thought it was good. You didn't introduce yourself, but I'm hoping that our I listeners... I think I'm just known by now. I mean, that's so arrogant. Really? All right. Well, now you're going to have to edit that out. No, right. I'm going to keep it, dude. All right. That can be one of the clips. Dylan Krasinski, Mike Kerrigan, <laughs> as always, every week. Dom Leonelli, Dominic yeah. Leonelli. It feels good to actually be on this. Every time I go on TikTok, I come across you guys with your crazy stories. Yeah, man. This is a story podcast, and we got one of the great storytellers right here. That's what uh, Mike said. I mean, this is a this is a time. This is a long time in the making. Yeah, that we've been trying to get this happen. We've been trying to get you on the pod because Mike is someone who I know has a ton of stories. And I think maybe the only person that I know who has more stories than Mike is you. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, every time I feel like half of Mike's stories are this guy I grew up with. And, yo, one time Dom told me he did this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. So what's been uh, wh- how, how first of all, the check in. How's everybody feeling? Everybody good? Great, man. Feeling everybody good. feeling nice. Yeah. We were talking about, oh, well, I mean, I guess I should say, first of all, uh, the <laughs> when you walked in, I mean, I'm going to say, you took a shit. You, first time he's <laughs> at my apartment and Dom goes, hey, man, can I take a shit? And then bef- the second question was, you got hand soap in here? <laughs> it's, which, from, it's from that book, How to Gain Influence in Positions of Power. You come in and, and you let your authority be known, but like, I'm going to dump right in your house. Well... I asked for the hand soap because, you know, this definitely looks like a bachelor pad. You guys can't see what I see. Dude, I don't got I don't. (laughs) If you ask me at my place, I'd be laughing at you for another reason. Hand soap. Am I doing this right? No, it's good. Uh, The uh, this this microphone. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the um, guys. If you're listening, uh, we do have two really nice mics and then one bad microphone that uh, we always give to the guest. So. (laughs) If you, uh, yeah, when you play with it, unfortunately, it will um, uh, like this, start to beep or whatever. Does this bump it or no? No, no, that should be fine. All right, cool. So, I gotta make sure I can show the face. Gotta get the goods. Gotta get the face. So, what's going on with you? What's new? With me? Yeah. Um, not too much. Yeah, it took me a while to get down here because um, I stopped riding the train. I'm like done with the train. I got like a five minute minimum with the train anymore. Really. Yeah, I just always had to ride it, and uh, honestly, it wasn't that bad. I thought I was going to be crazy late. Me and Mike ran into each other coming off the train. Yeah, you came in together. I thought you right down at the Wilson together. Spot. Oh, that's perfect. That's great. Yeah, I, I feel like I rode the train enough for a lifetime in New York. There's a lot of, well, Kerrigan and I talk a lot about train stories and things that are happening. Has anything weird, crazy happened to you on the train recently and then do you have a fucking craziest ever you know not craziest but you know what i had recently and me and mike talk about this i don't know if it's because my size people just feel like they could do whatever they want but this dude comes and grown man about 45 bigger guy and uh you know he comes down he's looking at me and then he he sits down next to me and he literally i'm not making this up put his hand on my thigh no Right? I swear to God, he goes, he's like, yeah, man, I know you. He's like, remember me from the bodega? I'm like, dude, I have no clue who you are. (laughs) And he's like, he's like, James. I'm like, nah, man, (laughs) that ain't me. (laughs) He's like, my bad. I'm looking to see if I'm being pranked. And uh, I was like, for three weeks, I'm like, I should have punched that guy. (laughs) Like, he literally, dude, he sits down, squeezes my leg. Like, I'm his girlfriend or something. And I just was in shock. I didn't know what to do. I was just sitting there. I didn't even brush it. Like, the dude was legit all this shit. And then finally, I'm like, yo, man. I said, what are you doing? Dude, even if he did know you, that is such an inappropriate way to (laughs) greet someone. Like, dude, if I saw Mike on the train and I was just, like, grabbed his thigh. That's a bad move. That's not a good move. Wow. Yeah, not okay. Um, Yeah, dude, the subways are getting dangerous. You should, dude. It, it's a disaster. It's you know what? Every time I'm down there, it feels like you're in a real life nightmare movie. Tonight, there was I don't know if you you were at the same train station. Did you see the bag at Wilson? The bag of uh, it was like a teddy bear, some rags, and then fifty five needles just <laughs> dumped out all over the station on the floor. Yeah, Jeez, that's a right nice now. subway, dude. Why are they doing that? 
We gotta get that. Well, we know why they're doing it. It's like that'll sit there for days. I know. I didn't clean it up. Yeah. Obviously, what am I gonna start picking up? Use heroin needles now. That'll be the next thing is they're going to get on the TV and be like, do the governor, do your part. Do New your York part. City, clean up the needles that you see on the floor. Oh, right. Man. Yeah. When you see a needle, say something. <laughs> see a needle, be a needle. Um, yeah, dude, my, you know, my brother, my brother, I told you this. My brother got me a knife to I carry around. Knife. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a badass knife. Yeah, super illegal to carry. It's not illegal to have. But it's super, it's one of those, like, they, it flicks out, like, super, it's it's only, like, three and a half inches, but it's, like, wicked dangerous. Yeah, I seen a guy selling knives on the train. He had knives and he had tasers, and I was like, this is just so ridiculous. Huh. You know, free sale. He And he was like, it was a real snapper, like, <laughs> That's the best place to sell it, actually. Yeah, he was, like, giving demos. I, I, actually, I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to carry a knife with me and, like, stab someone to death? Yeah, you got to be committed. That's what a lot of people, like, they give that knife to you. It's like, yeah. how, is Dylan committed to a stabbing? No, I, I'm committed to be like, excuse me, sir, can you please leave me alone? That's Dylan, about as you're much. You're more of a mace guy, like a nice bear I'll mace. commit to a mace. Yeah, you'll mace him in the face. Yeah. I seen, um, a couple weeks ago, I seen a guy sitting there minding his own business, skinny dude, late about 3 a.m., and uh, this other dude just comes across and starts, um, I guess, just talking shit to him. And uh, the dude pulls out a little um, razor. It was thin. Like, I was even thinking, i got to get one of these. <laughs> and he pulls it out, and it's a little straight razor. Oh. And he's like, has a heart-to-heart with him. He's like, listen, man, I know life's hard. And he's like, oh, about to cut this dude's face. He's like, I've been to prison my whole life. You know what I think would be a good weapon on the train? Is what? one of those, um, just like a straight needle, maybe, with like like a prison shank type, like a poke. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a bobby pin with like rope an ice around pick? it. Yeah, something like that. Because you could hide it easy and pull that out and get, get, get. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, the train is not prison. That you're talking about a prison shank. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, well, you can you can buy like a right. You don't gotta make home. He's like, you got you got to carve it in your bathroom <laughs> at like twelve at night. He's like, you know, when you take a toothbrush and you file it down Bro. to a fine point, that's what you need on the train. Well, here's the thing, because then you can melt it with a lighter. There's no weapon. <laughs> that, yeah, you just carry around an icicle. That's a, that's Forensic another thing. Files. Then it just melts. Sharp toothbrush. Tell people, hey, man, I don't want to get a cavity if a cop stops you. I think it would be funny. I, I've been talking about it on stage a little bit. It's been scaring audiences with for good reason. Is that I was like, I would like to pull out is a live grenade. Because that way, not only is the guy who's been screwing with you, it's the, all the people that just didn't help you. It's like, yeah, you didn't help me. Now we're all going down. Everybody's getting a taste. Everyone That's goes a, down. Yeah. You blow the whole cab up. Yeah. <laughs> it will put pressure on the regular citizens to step up. Be like, you don't know if this guy's got a grenade on him. Look at him. That's not going well with, well, uh, well with crowds? They're no. not liking it? So, I mean, these crowds are babies sometimes. You know, you got to. I'll tell you what. You know what? No, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I miss back in the day I used to do handiwork, and nothing made me feel bigger than when I got my tool bag with me and somebody talks some shit. Dude, I'd go pull out my hammer and set it on my lap, and I'd just sit there and be like, what, you want to keep talking? I'll smack you in the head. <laughs> just People just shut up. Dude, yeah, that's what someone told me about the knife because I was telling the story, and I was like, dude, I'm not going to stab someone, and they had a similar knife, and they go, one time, I literally, these guys came up to me, two guys, and I just took it out and flicked it open, and they both were like, yeah, we're good, and walked away. Yeah, so sometimes it. it's an intimidation factor, but dude, I'm not going to. Yeah, it can go so wrong. Oh, yeah. They just grab the knife because then they're like, now you're getting stabbed with yeah. your own knife. Give us your knife. Um, I bet the crowds, you know, when you talk about grenades on stage, they're just picturing you taking out a grenade. I think they also think that I'm pretty serious about it. Like sometimes, you know, when you don't set the tone right, they're like, it just gonna, sounds like something you're doing. We're going to read a story about this soon. Um, So, yeah, do, Dom, you grew up in... Ohio? Yep, Youngstown, Ohio. I just went back home, actually. Yeah, word. How was it? It was cool. I went skating. I actually seen my elementary school bully. Really? He's been lifting weights. He's been getting jacked. I'm like, man, I need to start working out. Yeah, <laughs> we were at the skate rink. And, Ice uh, skating or rollerblade? Rollerblade. And he couldn't rollerblade, so I just stayed on the... Oh, that's great. I oh, you thought he was still going to bully you at this age? Like, yeah. He was still hot. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just been lifting weights, like, still bullying people. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's real upsetting, dude. When you see a high school bully later in life, you expect and want them to be, like, 
not doing well. This guy's just really been winning. I mean, well, he wasn't doing well. He yeah. had about five kids, all different shade. <laughs> I see. Hey, nothing wrong with the shades. Love the shades. Oh, man. He, yeah, here at uh, the Sea Otter Town Hall podcast, we support all diversity. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he's still also living in Ohio, so you're doing better than him. Yeah, and honestly, I was going to talk to him, but I was like, I feel like he's got a knife on him or something. Yeah, I mean, statistically, those places are crime-ridden now. That's what people don't understand. It's the cities are bad, but you go to like the middle of nowhere anymore. It's not. It's not Mayberry anymore. These people are hooked on oxycontin. <laughs> you know, they're they're right. vicious. All out, outside of Massachusetts, all that stuff. Oh, Western Mass, bro. Oh, real bad stuff. Sure, I've never been there, but um, did you have? Did you get bullied a lot when you were in uh, high school or younger? I actually only got bullied for a very short period, um, two years probably. I got sent to a different school when um, the teachers figured out I couldn't learn properly. Like, I just didn't care about school, honestly. I just, um, I didn't even try anymore, to be honest. From the third grade on, I just marked down anything and turned it in. And after about two years of that, they sent me to a different school. And uh, that's when I got bullied. And my mom was sick, so... My dad was like, hey, don't get in trouble at school. You know, it'd be bad for your mom. So I used to let these kids just bully me. I even <sighs> felt like, oh, I could easily beat them up. But except for now, I, c- I couldn't beat the kid up now. But back then, I could have. Yeah. In elementary school, I felt like I could have, but I was t- so afraid of getting in trouble. And then I let it go for two years, and then I stood up to him one time, and it was over. They didn't bully me no more. Dude, yeah, that's that's the way to do it. You got to stand up to those bullies. Yep, I what do you call it? I dumped his desk on him. And then I figured out the inside story. His dad came to the school. And I guess you know how the, or like our older uncles all talk these stories. Mm-hmm. Well, my dad used to bully his dad. Stop. Yep. And really? I guess his dad used to tell the story. So he that's why he started bullying me cuz he felt bad. And then when my dad came to the school, he, he did he bullied the dude's dad <laughs> right there in the office. Dude, that's that's unbelievable. <laughs> My dad was a young father, so, you know, he was only 25 or 26 when this was happening, so he was a little childish. That's so funny, dude. What a... <laughs> I mean, that I, I felt bad for you Generational bullying <laughs> yeah. going on here. I felt bad for you, but, like, that guy is the hero. He's bullying you to stand up for his dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so from his, in his world, he's going again. Yeah, that's totally... That's a great... We got to get that other guy now on the pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the movie version of that, you are the bad guy. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're uh, Drago. You're from you're the Russian. He's Russian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's actually the kid that used to bully me. He's on oxycotton real bad. I went back home and um, I went to a house party, and he was there. The one kid, he was cool. It was two kids that used to do it, and they were both kind of friends. But the one kid, me and him are cool. The one I stood up to, you know, the other one I never stood up to, but um, he came to my high school once, and I broke this sit up record. At my school, it wasn't even like, you know, it's my dad's sit-up record, actually, <laughs> funny enough. But they couldn't find no real record of it. But um, so we just went by what people <laughs> said. <laughs> it's like my dad has the school record for sit-ups, and it's like just him telling you at the dinner table. And yeah. you go in, you're like, no, no, my dad swore it was no, isn't 150. That what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. My dad used to talk about this sit-up record he did and a few of his friends. But I guess they didn't keep, like, an account of it at the school, so we couldn't find the actual number. That's what's funny. So, you know. How many did you do? I did 2,301 because just in case so it was 2,300 that he did, I wanted to beat it. And how long? That's cra- That's a crazy amount of sit-ups. Yeah, I did in 45 minutes. That's way, that's a lot of sit-ups, dude. I couldn't do that. Yeah. yeah, of course not. <laughs> well, I'll, pay, I'll pay you a... All right, dude, that was a little mean. I'll pay you $1,000 if you do 300 in the next day. Dude, I could do 300 in the next day. No, I was just, it would have to be in an hour. Yeah, I'll call you out. I'll, call, I'll do 1000 I'll tell you what, hour, dude, it's dude. hard. When a I've 1000 in an hour? Dude, I did a, I did a 100 yesterday. Dude, I feel, Full like, I feel like this is crazy. I, I mean, I think I could yeah. do like 50. 50? And then that's it. I mean, how many... I don't, I don't dude, you're not, you're not getting into the... Hundreds. I could do 25 right now. 25? Okay, all right. All I right. lost it. Like, I'm talking full sit-ups. Dude, this is Kerrigan told me, uh, like, a year ago about your uh, pull-up routine. Who's? Your, yours, your pull-up res- regimen. That, that's not that big of a regimen. Dude, I, I can't do any pull-ups. 
Yeah, but that's that's an American. It's because you're an American disgrace. <laughs> you know what? Russian I'm, laugh. I'm Russians pulling, laugh at I'm us. pulling a. I'm pulling a lot more weight too. You should be able to do. I think you should start doing pull ups, bro. Get up to ten pull ups, dude. You can't just start doing. Yeah, pull-ups. you do. You you just hang and then you yeah. pull your hardest every day. Every day you're just dead hanging and pulling. No, you'll be able to do a half of one your first day, dude. You're not at zero. No, Stro, I'm pretty like, strong. What are you like a dude. baby? <laughs> you just, he's right, got dude. no pull ups. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see those um, assisted pull-ups at the gym, like at Planet Fitness? Oh, yeah, I could do a, those. Yeah. <laughs> I see people, like, banging out 100. I'm like, what are you doing? You're not getting any stress. <laughs> just, just fucking up the, the lower the it's weight. It's just an man. ego workout. They're just working their ego out. <laughs> yeah. That's something in the hood. When I was living in Harlem, everybody was doing pull-ups Oh, on the day. street. Yeah. Those street dudes. Those, that's it's straight intimidation. Yeah. Cranking them out off the construction. Straight prison. No, they do. No, I've seen it, dude. Those are the, I mean, those are the guys who are in the best shape. Yeah. The calisthenics guys. Yeah, the street workouts. On the playgrounds. Like, just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I I know I need to get something going for myself to get a little bit in shape. Yeah. I just need to get a little routine, you know? Like, I'm not trying to get all crazy. I used to be like, um, want to be huge. But now when I see short dudes that are real jacked, it just it just looks funny to me. They look like, fat sometimes. Like you ever see like somebody my height and they could bench like three hundred and twenty pounds? It's like what are you doing? Yeah, you're obsessed. How tall are you? Five five on a good day. Honestly, I don't. Know. <laughs> I think five. Are you five. taller or shorter than Kerrigan? I think we're about the same height. Kerrigan said something real funny. We were talking about this once. He goes, "Look, when you're my height, you stop checking." <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't care about. Just, let's just round it oh, up. Dude. Just Car- round it well, up. Well, we had a, we uh, uh who was the guy? Oh, it was Ray a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we went over this height thing. And Kerrigan got super mad because I said I asked him if he was five four, and he got super oh, pissed. Yeah, that, what are you you down on me to five four? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't like I said, not, I don't got a lot of leeway here. I need everything I yeah. got. He was like, I'm five six. Dude, dude, I just heard maybe. someone told me this term the other day, which short king. Yeah, I mean. How how insulting is it's super yeah, insulting. I've heard like, of people this. who the thing is, there's going to be a couple guys, and I think the guy I was talking to was one of them who like kind of buys into it. It's like, listen, you idiot, right? Short, who, who? What woman is calling a guy her short king? <laughs> Show me this woman on TikTok, please. You know what I was thinking. You about- can't even pay a prostitute to call you short king. <laughs> how come it's so wrong? Like, if you you ever start dating somebody. And then, like, you're attracted to them the way they are when you start dating them. And then they gain, like, 35 pounds. And then they get mad. Like, what? You don't love me? It's like, look, what if I showed up two feet shorter? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Would you break up with me if I was three foot tall? Of course. Of course they would. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's that's a good point. Next time someone does that. I had a girl, I was telling Mike this, I had a girl straight up measure me, and I was like, this is the last date we're ever going on. Last date? that Dude, that is one Wait, of the most what? degrading things I've ever heard yeah. in my life. What do you I, mean she straight up measured you? Well, I went to a doctor, and the doctor said I was 5'6", and I was like, never 5'6 in my life, but I was just like, damn, I must be 5'6", but I was like standing tall a little yeah, yeah, bit, yeah. and uh, anyways, I told her I'm 5'6", she's like, you are not 5'6". And she straight up measured me, and you know what the truth How'd she is? Measure you. I was five six, and she like she's like you're doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> what did she measure you with? A tape measure, straight up. I stood oh, on the edge. This is a first that? date. She made me take the shoes off. Yeah, she was like, "What are you?" She tried really downplaying me. She's like, "What are you like five one? <laughs> and you know what's funny? Me and her were the same height, and she's telling me she's five eight. I'm like, "Well, look at us in the mirror right now. Our heads are dead even." <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you 5'8 and I'm 5'1 and in the mirror we're dead even? She's like, your hair. <laughs> that dude. And that was the first. She just had a tape measure. Ready Straight to up go, measured man. me, man. She looked for it for about 45 minutes. She wouldn't let it go, dude. She's going through drawers. <laughs> I, yeah. could see, I could see that happening to Dom. That's <laughs> super funny, dude. You didn't call her again? No, I left. That was it. Oh, dude, that's sad. I was so mad. That would be, imagine telling a girl she's over and you're just like, hey, come here for a sec. Just just pop on the scale. Let's see what you're at. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, stop sucking it in. Dude, I'm going to start wearing lifts, I think. They, they, uh, you guys should rock them too. 
I mean, I'm five ten, but uh, you know, <laughs> I uh, I want to get to that six one. You can buy a three inch lift <laughs> and put it in your sneakers, dude. Can you imagine me walking around fucking six one, dude? I would be. I knew somebody that did that. And uh, one of my uncles did it. He went too big, man. He It was like he had high heels on. You know, the shoes look like some moon boots. And he's just, there. you can't, you got to be careful going down steps. It's just crazy. Dude, it's, it is crazy. I, I wanted, I thought you were going to meet this guy. I was gonna, supposed to work with, John was going to work with me one time. Mm-hmm. So I'd roll up to this dude's house. And he's in like, I don't know where he lives. He lives out in like that super, super Italian area. Like uh, Bensonhurst or somewhere. Okay. And I'm doing a job oh, yeah. for him, and he's sitting on his stoop. And I roll up, and I was, I, I just like, I almost started laughing. I was like, this, this guy is a real funny guy. Like, he's <laughs> gonna say something eventually, dude. He, what he was, he's a, a guy, dead bald, yeah. you know, dead bald, fat Jersey type guy. Spray paints his head black. <laughs> spray paints it. It's not like <laughs> some people like. Is it like a spray hair? No, I'm like, it's some sort of human spray paint, just jet black. And I'm like, I met his wife, and I'm like, dude. You, what is this guy's deal? So it looks like he has hair. Yeah, like no one in his life. Like if you walked into a store and I didn't know you, I'd be like, what the f- What are you, did somebody spray paint your head black? Did you uh, see the new thing? You weren't in the green room last night. Me and Mike were at the stand. There was a comic there that had his hair tattooed on. That's a new thing people oh. are doing. Oh, yeah. They're getting the top tattooed and then you just got to shave the sides. I couldn't tell. Damn. That's kind of like, cool. I mean, it wouldn't good. work for me, but a black dude, it it works. And if I had it tattooed on me, I think it'd be noticeable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'd look, you'd look totally crazy. I'm, um, you know, I'm probably gonna. I've been balding in the back about the same for about five years now, and honestly, it does bother me. Like, I think I am gonna. If I run into some money, I would fix that. Of course, like Elon Musk. Yeah, I didn't know he Bezos. Fixed that. Yeah, I seen his. That's mom. what I'm talking about, bro. He was on. He was on the the edge, dude. Have you ever seen pictures of Jeff Bezos before he became a billionaire? Yeah, he was. He looked like a nerd. He's dude, jacked he's now, skinny, losing his hair, bad teeth, bad skin. So that's why attractive people they just have money, you know. Like he got on steroids. He did it all right. He's like on a probably a you know testosterone regimen. You know that's the way to do it. Yeah, he's jacked right now. Oh, he looks great. He's just swimming with models in the in the Greek Isles. Dude, on these his guys, yacht. these guys can't get away from the islands, can they? They just keep pushing it with the dude. islands. Pretty good. Um, I'm an island boy. <laughs> but that would be a funny meme. It's island boy, but it's Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I have I have a question. So Kerrigan used to tell me a story. And I've never heard you tell it, so I want to hear it from your side. You used to tell me a story about when you guys went together to go look for uh, storage units. Oh, yeah, me and Mike. Did you ever live in one? <laughs> or did you consider no, no. it? I No, I I wasn't involved with Dom's one. But when I went, yeah. the lady knew. She kept saying to me, and she goes, and you cannot live here. She's yeah. just like, because they can just feel that, you know, you got that. They, your life, when you come into them, like the way I did and probably you did, your life, you've just been kicked out of a place. You're homeless. They can smell it on you. They go, look at this guy's life is trash. Shoes got holes in them. He's going to try to live here. And um, I didn't do it because she warned me so hard. I ended up, I figured it out. But you you ended up doing it. Yeah, see, what when she was telling me about it, because I heard the same thing, and I did look bad. Like You can smell it on him. You're like, this dude. kid doesn't got a place to I was broke for the longest. I wish I had like the Kanye documentary. I wish I had somebody recording that. I didn't even have a a, like a working phone at the time or anything. So but I was in bad shape for a while. And you know, what's crazy. I was still paying my rent. I didn't know in New York, you could just not pay your rent like nothing really happens. Yeah, they got to really go through a process to evict you. But dude, if you just don't pay like you can buy yourself. I mean, your credit will be fucked and everything like that. But for them to evict you, it takes a while. I lived like at a place. Six months, probably. Well, the place I lived at, the dude was, he didn't follow anything by the law. He was arrested a couple times. So maybe that's why he straight up kicked me out. One day he just said, look, man, you got to go. I don't want to live with you no more. <laughs> I, and I had to leave. He was like, I'd have to fight him if I wanted to stay. <laughs> he, definitely like, not every how night, things work. Every night to get in, you got to fist fight him. Yeah, dude, yeah, that... Uh, that, you could just call the police and be like, hey, man, Dude, my roommate's do threatening anything. to fight me. If you're in the Bronx like that, like they're going to be like, listen, we got a lot of problems going on. This <laughs> this is not on the 
you know, yeah. top not, 10. Not to throw shade at New York cops, and I'm not at all. But one time, I just tell you this quick story. I was doing a moving job, mm-hmm. and this guy backed into my van, dented it right in front of me. And I was like, dude, I just watched you do it. And he's going off saying, I didn't do it. I was like, well, it's still, it, it was still against my van. I said, you see your toe hitch pushed in my bumper. He didn't even bother pulling up. I'm like, it's, you could see you did it. And he's like, man, I know everybody. I'm in the mob. And he's saying all this stuff. It was like in Brooklyn, Bensonhurst or something. Yeah, and everybody in there, down there says they're in the mob. <laughs> Bro, so anyways, I go to leave. He said he called the cops because I took a picture of his mm-hmm. plate. You know, maybe I shouldn't have. And it just made him snap. He's like, I'm calling the cops. And I back up the van. I had another moving job to do. This dude charges the van when he sees I'm leaving and jumps on the door. He's hitting me. Dude, I floor it. <laughs> and this dude's like 60 years old. Uh, and he and I'm driving and his feet are like kicking against the ground. Dude, I looked at the speedometer. I was doing 45. <laughs> like, And the dude went tumbling. Like he went rolling. And the guy <laughs> that I did the moving job for called me. He's like, hey, man, I got all that on video of him attacking you if you need it. And then he's like, calls me later, and he's like, hey, man, the cops are here. He called the cops. Everybody's lying. He goes, I deleted <laughs> the video. I don't want to get involved. What an idiot. What? Yeah, so he's like, please just leave me alone. So, dude, I'm like, all right, I go dude, to the cops. Send me the video. Bro, I went to the cops, and I told the cop what happened. And then the cop's like, yeah, man, you're fine. I was like, well, am I going to get in trouble? I said, I floored it. The guy went tumbling. <laughs> and he said, nah. He's like, you know. There'd be so much paperwork, and it would have to be like three or four times of you doing it. <laughs> He's like, I'm sure the dude wasn't even in the mob. <laughs> that's that's their concern. Jesus, dude. He's like, if it makes you feel better, you could fill out a report. <laughs> so I filled out a report. Dude, I had to wait five hours for the cops. You just watch them put it right into the trash can <laughs> as you're done. Like, right. thank you. Thank you for your... In time. Yeah, we'll get right on this case. Nothing happened. One time I got thrown out of McDonald's when I first moved here. Dude, like I said, I was kind of broke. I bought a fry with, like, change that I had, like, you know, from standing in front of the place. Like, I was <laughs> broke. And uh, they wouldn't give me my fry. The You know, the, what happened was, that I'm, this just shows how broke I looked. The guy at the register was like, yo, I'll give you a dollar if you pick that sign up. And I was such a jerk. I was a little buzzed. And I was like, dude, I'm not picking up that sign on the ground. Sam, my fries are sitting there. He's not giving them to me. Like 10 minutes goes by. I knew my number. So I just went back to grab him. Dude, this dude grabs me, body slams me on the ground. So I called the cops on him and I give him my name. And they're like, yeah, where are you? We'll come to you right now. I had a warrant. (laughs) (laughs) I settled it. It was just from... um, what do you call from hopping back when they used to enforce that? Jeez. Yeah, I never I never hopped. <laughs> so they came. That's so funny. They were literally like, oh, we'll come get you. And they arrested you? No, they actually uh, told me I had a warrant over the phone. That oh, I had that to, sucks. Yeah, right after I told them where I was. That's, so, that's, uh, see, that's them giving you the heads up. They're like, we don't even want to really get you, so why don't you hit, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the, you hey, do you, out. do you really want us to come and take care of this French fry situation at McDonald's? Uh, because <laughs> right. if so, you're getting arrested. What happened was I hopped downtown. I got busted immediately, 42nd Street, and the guy comes up with the badge. Oh, this was, yeah. And he goes, hey, man, you want to come with me for a second? And he felt bad. He's like, what are you doing if you can't afford 275 while you're living in New York? Because I had an Ohio ID. I just moved here at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm chasing my dream to be a comedian. And he was heartfelt. He was like, well, um, um, what do you call? He's like, I get it. And... uh. He's like, if you're going to hop, man, go up to 50th. Nobody's ever over there, man. And that's what happened. I hopped at 50th and got busted. Yeah. He <laughs> got said, the yeah. ticket. He said, yeah, that's their sense of humor, those cops. <laughs> Fucking, oh, my God. I don't normally hop. I don't think I've only hopped. I only hop when, um, you know, you you scan it through and you're Dude, going the wrong way. Dude, it makes me so angry when it doesn't work. Oh, I, that's when I hop. And it'll be like, oh, keep keep swiping here. And I'm, I've watched the train, like, pull up. And pull away, and I was, I'm like yelling at the person. I'm like, "Let me in, dude! Well, I got the fucking dude." During Corona, it was free hopping. Everyone knew that it was free. The trains were free. You didn't have to really? do anything. You could do anything you wanted down there. You have a little barbecue, start a fire. I feel smoke some meth, whatever. You <laughs> want. Absolutely, smoke meth. 
in Brooklyn, like especially your stop, come on, you don't even need it. Oh, they dude. have the door uh, wide open. Oh yeah, I uh, up the uh, on the J up there. I literally the door is unlocked. <laughs> I watch. I swipe in. I pay for the monthly, so I'm gonna use it. Whatever. But like, I literally watch the girl just walk straight to the door, open it up. It's unlocked. It's like the latch must have been broken or oh, something. Yeah, they, yeah. Not fixing it. Whatever. I have. Uh, I've only hopped. I think once. Also, I tried to physically hop and like with Artie once and I, I literally just like didn't do it right and just fell and like it just like rolled backwards like I was exiting. That's awesome. It's so embarrassing. That is awesome. Somebody died like that recently. The best way to do it is Wait, pull what? How'd yeah, they you die? didn't hear about that? They hopped and hit their head like two months ago. Oh God. The best way is to pull it towards you and then just slip your legs through it. I'm a little thick for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen that move. So I had a roommate who was a master at it. It was uh, it was a work of art. I'm good. I was pretty good at it. Not anymore. I got tickets. I've talked about this, but I got tickets for uh, smoking a jewel on the on the platform at uh, Broadway Junction. Hmm. Dude, three. That, that's so. That's so. There's so much wrong with that. At Broadway three. Junction, you should be yeah. allowed to smoke just from the pure stress of that place. <laughs> it was three in the morning. I told you this. It was like middle of winter. Three in the morning. I had my hood on. I missed the train. Uh, I, I like was watching a video on my phone, went past Wilson out to Broadway Junction and three. I thought I was getting jumped. Three guys come and surround me like plain clothes. And then they show me a badge. Dude, I thought I was getting robbed. I was like so upset. Um, yeah. And they wrote me a ticket for it. Yeah. I had my hood on. I don't think uh, I think they were going to come and like hassle did someone. You, did you ever pay and, the ticket? Yeah. Yeah. I, paid. I was going to fight it. And then I ended up just paying it. I had this job as a dog walker, and I got in trouble, and he would swears by, he's like, you don't need to pay the tickets. <laughs> he's like, they don't care. You absolutely need to pay the tickets, <laughs> dude. Um, dude, what's so, so when you first moved here, you were just dead broke. You just moved here, no money? No, actually, I moved here with a decent amount of money. I worked real hard so much. Like, dude, I even, like, dropped out of school and worked a full-time job. I never had, like, time off of work, like, since I was a kid that I can remember. So when I first moved here, I was like, I just don't want to work for the summer. Like, I just want to have three months off mm-hmm. and enjoy one summer. So I saved up a good amount of money, and uh, I did okay. And then I had a job as a bartender that I literally got in one day so easy that I was like, oh, New York's pretty easy. Like, And I was doing good. And where I really screwed up was I quit that job. And uh, my finances weren't the best at that time. And I quit, and dude, I could not get a job. Like it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. Uh, what's uh, did, what was like? Did you ever do any like wild stuff for money or like crazy stuff to just get by? I stole change out of the wish fountain one time at uh, Chase Bank and Sixth Ave. I scoped it out, and undercover cop grabbed my arm when I did it. Dude, there was like nobody around. I'm dude, watching. Who is that money for? But not people that are that desperate to. If you are desperate enough, you're going to the wish fountain. That's your money. Also, <laughs> where's that money supposed to be going? Also, what cop is uh, their job to just monitor the wish fountain? Right. Like, put that. Put those pennies back. Those are going to <laughs> the wishes that people make. He made me put it back, that and he was telling me he's like, I could charge you with a felony for robbing a bank. That's what he said. Dude, <laughs> see, that's the type dude, of that's cop. abandonment, dude. I would, I would think that's that abandonment. Cop and be like, what, what? Everything you just said is uh-huh. not true. It was like um, sixty cents, dude. That yeah, seems that's like, like abandoned um, property. People are throwing it in a well in a fountain. Yeah, that's public property, in my opinion. I feel like, actually, honestly, that brings up a good legal argument, which is I know what these guys love to hear about. Uh, But, like, yeah, dude, if you're in a public park, like Central Park, and you get all the money, because I'm sure the city probably scoops out all that change every now and then because it would fill up, right? Yep, right into Cuomo's pocket. So does that go, (laughs) yeah, right into (laughs) that predator's pocket, dude. He's out, but he's trying, you know, have you seen his new government? He's running again. Is he really? He's trying to. He's feeling the water. No freak. I think he's still got No way. Yeah. So, yeah, where does that money go? They definitely, they just give it to the city. So, in a public park, in a public area, are you stealing from the city? If you steal discarded, abandoned property, it's abandoned tr- it's money. It's trash. Dude, because what's the difference between a dollar bill next to the fountain on the ground or in the fountain? I'll tell you what, when I was begging for money, people would laugh in my face. Like, Jeez. they just thought, like, what do you need? Like, are you serious? Go work. Like, How old were you? I was probably 28, 
maybe 29. Man, dude, those were some dark years. The craziest thing I probably did was, <laughs> honestly, dude, I like looking back, I can't believe it was me. But I remember I lived in the Bronx, and I remember there was these um, things for 15 cents, um, these like candy things and that everywhere else they were 25 cents, but it was a bag of like candy. And I would walk like 20 blocks and that's what I would eat for the day. Like it was so hard to get changed. Like, jeez, I give it to people. It's a hustle, man. But like even ramen noodles would be like, Oh, I made it. I got a pack of ramen. I got 25 <laughs> cents today. I would just be staring for change on the ground. Like, five cents meant so much. You know, like, it's not a lot. If you have 20 cents and, like, ramen noodles or 25, the amount of shit that you would do for that five cents. Dude, like, I was, I I mean, I'm not trying to brag here, but uh, <laughs> I ate, I used to, I, I would eat at the soup kitchen. Really? Yeah. I should have tried you get a, that. You get, it's more than soup. You get a sandwich, soup, and then there's some sort of a dessert thing. And then it was weird because all the homeless uh, people that I was eating lunch with see me, like, a couple months later, I, like, Gotten my own company going, and they were huh. like, they would always be like, "Is that it? I've never even lunch that. <laughs> Look at that. He made good, dude. It's the way the way that you see celebrities on the street. They're like, is that Mike? It's like Campbell's. Oh, it's like Campbell's uh, chicken noodle. I was too. That's not bad. And you know. can get free coffee at AA for all the kids. Are you at on home. your phone right now? What, sorry, what, what sorry. are you doing, dude? <laughs> I thought I just got a couple messages. Um, yeah, so you, we bring you on the pod to tell some <laughs> stories, to hang out with us, and you're just fucking talk, looking at your phone. My bad. No, it's, um, it's you know, very rude. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I never attempted to go for the soup kitchen. I probably should have. Or the Salvation Army. I used to, my thing was, when I was out of the storage unit, I only had two months there. I, what do you call it? I put all my stuff at a comedy club, the Creek in the Cave. Because I used to, during the day, I'd go sleep at the storage unit. Like, the same thing Mike was saying. She would be like, you can't be here at night. There's there's sensors. The cops will come <laughs> if you're here at night. We'll know. And I was just thinking, okay, like, I get it. I'll come in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep during the day. Bro, so 8 a.m., I knew I just had to make it through the night. And uh, it was freezing, too. It was in the winter time when um, Damn. I was homeless. And then... Uh, Where would you sleep? Well, when I would, I would sleep in the unit. Now, a few people did it. Like, there was probably seven or eight people that would go there during the day and just sleep there. And uh, just right on the, you know, right on the storage unit. You know, I had to hop up in there. It was uh, one of those higher ones. Mm -hmm. I, I had to climb up in there. And uh, when that was done, yeah, I put my stuff at the creek in the cave. And I... um would sleep in like Union Square Park one time. I actually found a bench. I went and looked at it last night just to bring back memories. <laughs> I slept on this. I found a nice because people don't let you sleep outside. They'll find they'll wake you up. This is when New York was busy. There was nowhere you have to hide to sleep somewhere because somebody will come out of a building and be like, "Hey man, you gotta go. You can't sleep here." So I found a nice little spot behind the bushes in a Union Square on a bench. But, dude, one time I slept on the ground in Union Square, woke up next to a human turd. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of dumps up there. That's a dump, big dump area. Your best bet to be homeless <laughs> is in the springtime when it's pretty nice. What you do is you stay up all night, right? And then you go to Bryant Square Park during the day and just camp out, man. You just sleep there Damn, all day. Dude. And that was my move for the summer. So you just do shows and then stay Man. up all night? Dude, at this point, I wasn't even doing shows. Really? Yeah, I was just literally just trying to survive. Dude, when I tell you, I was starving. I got skinny. I mean, it was like, you know, I was like living off 20 cents a day. Whatever change I found, that's what I was eating with that day. You were like one of those those African kids. They're like, all you need is 15 cents a day. Right. And looking back on it, I should have bought like a bag of rice. <laughs> Instead, like, because you can get that for a dollar. How do you cook? Good. How do you cook like ramen or rice or hot food, dude? Well, when I was completely homeless, I didn't cook. You know what happened though? I started living good. I ran into this other comedian. I don't want to mention his name, but he was struggling too, and he taught me how to steal real good. He's like, bro, all you got to do is get a newspaper and just put the sandwich in the newspaper and leave. Nobody will know, like those <laughs> pretz and stuff. <laughs> Dude, I was living good, man. I was eating avocado tuna melts. And <laughs> I would literally be running out of the place. 
Jeez. Did you, uh, Kerrigan told me, did you, you slept in uh, Thompson Square Park once. Yeah, Thompson was more Bro, there's so many rats That's there. That's the most rat infested park in the city. Yeah, I would say I did a lot of Union Square. I used to just sit at Union Square. And Union's not much better, no, rat wise. No. I mean, dude. that ground is barely even stable. If oh. you were to like sonogram it, like, dude, it's all hollowed out. It's all little rat nests. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Dude, I can't handle dude, that. Dude, they have sidewalk collapses in New York. They always like, whoa, we don't know what it is. You know what it is. It's the rats. <laughs> the rats, dude. Digging out the sidewalk. All those sinkholes that keep happening in the city, it's just rats fucking digging it out, dude. Imagine if you fell through the sidewalk into like a pile of rats, like uh, a I mean, swimming pool of rats. I, I I can't imagine wanting to die, but I feel like that would be Dude, if you're exception. getting bit, you're not going to have to worry too long. You're, it's a serious, you're not, dude, rat bites aren't just like a bite. It's <sighs> Dude. It's very dangerous. They can gnaw through metal, dude. They no, can it's cut the infection. Through it's steel. the infection. Well, that you got to worry about. I don't care about the bite. Do you think the New York City rats carry diseases? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I asked a guy, I said, why is your leg all green? He's like, something, I got bit by a rat. He told me that. Oh. Uh, green? That's like gangrene. They got to amputate. Bro, some of the people I've seen out, like, at these places... Like, dude, the people sleeping outside at night sometimes. Even now, like, when I get done with the show in Times Square sometimes and I leave and it's late, like a Saturday at 3, I don't know. Like, I might go get something to eat. It might be, like, 3.30 in the morning. Some of the, like, people that come out, you're like, I don't even know if this dude's a human. Like, <laughs> so so they're, like, straight up mutants. Not to be, but it's, like, it's hard not to look. It's like, man, somebody like this exists in the world. Yeah, that's that's wild. Um Damn, dude. That's crazy. But now you're killing it, dude. Now you're doing great. You're living yeah. in the West Village. Dude, talk about we're about to hit the road. Yeah, dude. Me a lot Dom changed. hitting the road, baby. I remember back in the day, dude, mics were $5. It's like, dude, I can't even consider oh, I didn't. I didn't do any paid mics That's when I moved cr- Yeah, that is I crazy. No, I did no paid mic. Well, maybe, I wouldn't say no, but almost none. That was like my thing. Almost none. Like maybe one or two a year. Like, Or if, if I was with a friend. Like, you know, yeah, if I was yeah, wrong yeah. with you and you're like, I want to do this mic. Yeah. I would just do free mics because I was like, I came from free mics. I'm like, I'm not paying money to eat shit at a mic in Bushwick. No. No, no. dude. Especially no one's listening. They're the worst, dude. I hate them. Yeah. Um, yeah, my thing was the Creek in the Cave. Every mic was free. Shout out to Rebecca there in Austin. You guys got to check it out. The yeah, Creek in the Cave. The creek too. She would feed me. She'd be like, you look like you're starving. I was like, I am. She bought me a burrito a couple of times. Oh, that's, man, great. that's great. She's so cool, man. People, comics would go to the Creek just for the popcorn and water. You remember that? Dude. I yeah, I've heard. I mean, I've heard a lot of stories about. I feel like that the creek in the cave is. It was the closest to a homeless shelter slash comedy yeah. venue. I that didn't. You I could. didn't go for the popcorn water. I went for the bo and high opinions <laughs> themselves. People had. You're like, you get an awfully high opinion for a guy who can't put on deodorant. <laughs> I legit had my stuff under the seats, and I remember being in an open mic, and somebody's like, "What's this?" They like pulled out my clothes. I was so embarrassed to be like, oh, yeah, that's my stuff. I would stay there till f- like, 5 in the morning till they close. I'd be trying to start up some conversations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think we're going to leave. Well, listen, uh, what do you think about the um, uh, neurokinetic energy? <laughs> 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 Just getting it going. You're like, Wait, why don't we have a why don't we have a nightcap after a nightcap? Let's hang. It's only five. Oh, hey, did you ever um, did you ever try to like uh, pick up women to go and like sleep at their houses? No, dude, I was so broke. I was single for seven years. I couldn't even consider. I wouldn't even put a woman through that. Honestly, I don't even have the calories to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about dating. It the a thought didn't even cross my mind. Like. Dude, I had, like, one pair of shorts and, like, flip-flops. I remember a dude stepped on my flip-flop and broke it. And I'm like, dude, you got to give me money in Times Square. He won it. He's like, man, those things are trash. I'm like, dude, so I was barefoot, dude. Had fucking one flip-flop, dude, straight up. Oh, you know, when no. I tell people these stories, they're like, nah, there's no way. Dude, you would look like it, honestly, and I don't mean, you would look straight if you wore no shoes. They'd be like, dude, there's a caveman walking through <laughs> Times Square. I would just be sitting in front of places wasting time. And I remember people did not believe that I was, br- I would be like, can I please have a dollar for a slice of pizza? And I remember so many people laughing in my face. Not to sound mean, but I'll tell you one thing. 
white people don't give money to other white people. Like they're just <laughs> like, yo, you failed. The only person that would maybe gave me money a few times was a Spanish woman. I remember she like bought me food and she was so loving. And uh, maybe like once or twice, maybe like a black person. But for the most part, They'd be like, dude, you're white. <laughs> like, do you think I could just go somewhere? I'd just smack you and give you a lecture. Remember there was that, um, there used to be a couple comics. Everybody would brag because there was like, they'd be like, oh man, there's this comic. He lives in a place without water. That's really struggling. I was begging to live there. And the dude, <laughs> legit, I still see him now. I'm friends with the guy. Winter time, I'm sleeping outside. That was his response. He's like, man, you're white. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm. I'm also sleeping outside. Can I please sleep on your floor for two weeks? And he's like, I don't have water. You don't want to live here. And to this <laughs> like, day, people brag about that. We're like, remember them comics living without water? Now that's hard. I'd be like, dude, I was in a storage unit. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to one up anybody, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I watch the YouTube videos on how to live. Like, I know how to live in a storage unit if I had to. It generally doesn't work in New York the way the guy did it. Yeah. Like, because he had water filtration. Like, he, oh, really? he, he could access it. At all times. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the best way, go there during the day. One of those ones where they don't care, like up in the Bronx. Oh, yeah, you deep. get away with it, the Bronx. You need one with a code, so you could just punch in early mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Let them, let yeah, just come right in. Um, dude, Kerrigan, I wanted to ask you, uh, so we were, I keep getting messages, dude, from your... From your fr every time you tell a story on this podcast that you know people see, I get messages from your friends that you grew up with, and one of the one of the people hit me up and they wanted you to tell a story about a time that you you moved to San Diego. Oh man, I just I lived there when I was twenty. That was a rough rough time. <laughs> Dude, it was a community call. Me and my buddy were going to community college in the Boston area, and we're like. He came up with some plan. Like, we needed some excuse to move to California. We're like, oh, we're going to college out there. But the people were like, wait, don't you go to community college? We're like, well, they have community colleges there. <laughs> and we, like, went. Uh, it all, that was a nightmare of time. But I remember, this is how far, me and the kid went to the, the first day you sign up for classes. Dude, he left before the sign-ups. That was his. <laughs> I used to go, like, one, I, I was, like, sober enough, like, to make it a couple times a week. And I remember a professor said, why do you come here? <laughs> They're like, I would just be stuck. You know, I just smell like vodka. It, I, it was just not good. <laughs> what were you studying? Community college, you're like probably eighth grade math. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't pass. Oh, man. You didn't uh, even have a major. No, man. It was, it was, uh, that was a rough time. San Diego, though, I hear it's pretty, though. I mean, that's the place to go. It is good. You got to live by the beach. You could be homeless by the beach. Yeah, that's oh, the place. That's what I always wonder about. Um, like, I know you were here trying to do comedy, but I always think about, like, when people are homeless in, like, cities like Chicago and, and New York and, like, Buffalo. Like, why wouldn't you just move to Miami well, that's, or, they like, do. California? Dude, that, San Diego's plagued with it. It's you, just, like, they're not even, like, fully, they're just, like, lazy kids sometimes. You're like, you haven't even put in an effort. You know, I never flew ever until I was about 35 after the pandemic is when I flew for the first time. And because, really? yeah, because I didn't want to spend the money. Like I had to work so hard for the little bit of money I saved yeah. before I moved here, like a few grand or whatever. And I couldn't even fathom $200 on a ticket. I could, yeah. Like, that's I mean, like that makes sense. Yeah. You could get a Greyhound dude. Can you imagine like getting a Greyhound to just go, be homeless in, uh, getting a greyhound from like new york city to just go be homeless in california that's what greyhound really is it is the travel um conduit for homeless people dude there are states there are states this is like the midwest states or california will do this new york will do this they will buy i don't they don't have like an official but a lot of times if you get arrested and this is how it works they will buy you a ticket a one-way ticket to go and like Get the hell Very out of there. Yeah, they'll be like, hey, we'll buy you a ticket to Chicago. Do you want to go to Chicago? You ever been to uh, Des Moines before? And they'll just buy you a one-way ticket to those places to just, like, get you out of the city. Yeah, I read a thing once that back in the day why so many crazy people live in New York is because a lot of people shipped them to New York, like, if back before they had, uh, before they knew, like, in the 50s when you yeah. were just, like, kind of crazy and they didn't know, like... What should we do? They would just send them to New York. Tell you to, you're a Makes film sense, director. <laughs> it's, yeah, just 
Yeah, go uh, go live your dreams. <laughs> yeah, you know which That's other one I feel like is even uh, easier to be homeless on than Greyhound is Megabus. They don't ask you no questions on Megabus. There's no check-in. Yeah, you just get on. You literally just get on on the side of the street somewhere. Like Greyhound, you got to go to the station. They're like... They got a big attitude at Greyhound. Bro. Too. Big. You always run into this lady. She's already had it with you before you even <laughs> say... She's just like, you know, just so mad. It reminds me of the DMV. It's the same vibe of just the worst customer service you're ever going to get. They're always like, oh, you, you're like, I got my ticket on my phone. They're like, oh, that's great. Now you got to go print it out. Well, I'm like, print it out? Where? <laughs> it's just, Where's the they make printing it so system? Difficult, dude. Like, what? I was like, what year is this? Dude. One time. <laughs> well, my bad. I was no, just no, going to no, say, go, one, go, go. one time I, I did mega bus, and I remember I didn't even have my ticket. I uh, missed my bus. And the dude's like, just give me $20. And I got on the <laughs> mega bus. I didn't check my ID. I could have been wanted for murder. <laughs> That's so it's fun. None of their business. Yeah, they don't care, dude. They don't just want get it right on. Yeah, I'm a big Amtrak guy, but you, that's too expensive now. I love Amtrak, yeah, it's but it's up to like $300. Way, dude, it's cheaper to fly. Like, yeah. it's cheaper to fly to Boston than take the Amtrak to Boston at this point. Yeah, I, I took like, the Accela once, the three and a half hour it's one. awesome. 12 hours. <laughs> took 12 hours. The, and I go, what, what was the delay? There was a half an inch of snow. I had no faith in this new technology. I was like, <laughs> a half an inch, shut it down. But luckily, I'd taken an unmarked edible. You know, I was in just living. I couldn't get over. I was in the worst state possible. If anyone had asked me what's going on, I was like, dude, this train is going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> Trains like uh, traveling in luxury, though. Like you get a little more comfortable on a train. That's, oh, that's why great. I got it. I thought I was going to be living it up. I was mm-hmm. going to go to the food mm-hmm. car. And instead, it was just they're like the food car shut down. And we were on the tracks for 12 That's hours. That's the worst, man. Is I, I got on a tra- I got a train uh, from Albany coming back to New York once. I was so hungover. This was a couple months ago. Maybe a, maybe like a year ago, actually. And I was so hungover. And I was about to miss the train. And I, I hadn't eaten. It was like 2 o'clock. And I'm, I'm running to the train. And I was like, ah, let, let me stop and get chips. I was like, no, nah, it's too close. I'm going to miss it. I run. I like just get on the train. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, don't worry. Like, I'll just get a snack. Dude, I had no water. No food. And you know when you're, like, hungover and, like, you haven't eaten and it's just, like, you feel like you're going to puke because of that? Dude, they get on and they're, like, the food car will be closed for the trip. And then I was, I, dude, I, I almost, like, had a panic attack because I was, like, <laughs> dude, I'm stuck now on this train for three and a half hours. Uh, no food. So I'm not going to eat until, like, six o'clock tonight. Obviously, you know, I could do with not a, you know. It, Did you have any drinks? I'm not going to starve to death. Dude, I had no water. I had nothing. Dude, I was about to go and, like, get water from the bathroom but you can't do that because it's like all filtered you oh, get sick dude, dude. that's out of a bag dude you, it's <laughs> all filtered you know that that's why i found that out when you wash your hands in a train it's just like taking dirty water and they filter it back in it's just like a loop it's just like a like the long island railroad it's just looping dirty water dude oh yeah not good um dude we're at so kerrigan and i talked i don't know how you feel if you want to do some more but we talked about doing like a two-parter yeah yeah uh, you want to do that, that? you want to yeah, take we'll a little do, break we'll do a break yeah. All right, you want to do some plugs uh, for this one, and then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll come back. We're also in Rhode Island this weekend, so. Oh, yeah, April 2nd. Yeah, Two this will be out tomorrow. This, is up. this will be oh, out this tomorrow. W- okay, sweet. Yeah, we got um, some shows coming up, but even more importantly than that, you got to check out my YouTube, D- Dom's Details, and my TikTok, Dominic Leonelli. I'll be on there. I do these little stories. A couple of them are going viral. Original sketches. Yeah, mm-hmm, we got some mm-hmm, sketches. Mm-hmm. Me and Mike were actually doing a sketch last night. Uh, improv. We got this new thing. We're gonna put out a lot of improv, a lot of improv stuff. videos. Maybe some acting classes soon, so you can get. There'll be five hundred dollars for what a week or a day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll charge you. <laughs> uh, you want to do yours at Mike T Carrigan? At Mike T Carrigan at uh, Instagram and whatever else. I don't know where else. Instagram dot com, baby. Instagram dot com. Uh, at Dylan Krasinski on YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, Sea Otter Town Hall is out every Wednesday. So if uh, you're listening to this Wednesday. Today, uh, we're starting uh, doing shows Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Old Man Hustle in the Lower East Side. Come out, two shows every night, 7 and 9 o'clock. Follow me on my Instagram. That's where I post everything, Dylan Krasinski. All right, and uh, we'll be back with Dom a little bit later. We'll see you next week. Good night.